this time I'll call the work session to order. Um, our first business is that we've got a special presentation on potential opioid litigation. We've got Mr. Andrew Hill with us, as well as the guest. If you would, please come forward and make your presentation. Good morning, and welcome to Lambs County. Well, thank you for having me down from Athens. Good morning. I'm Drew Hill from Athens, and this is Chris Clark from over in Macon, uh, who's with me today, who assists us on our opioid litigation. Uh, again, thank you for having me down. I won't take much of your time this morning. I know the county has decided to go forward in taking a look at uh, entering into the opioid litigation, so I won't really go into uh, how we got to where we are. I think you probably know enough through the media and just other presentations maybe as to how Lowndes County and the other 158 counties in Georgia have gotten where we are in the opioid epidemic. So let me just tell you a little bit about our law firm uh, and what I think that we bring to the table for Lowndes County that maybe other law firms do not. We got into the MDL, multi-district litigation, which is what this is called, business about 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, we had four or five women come into our office in Athens uh, who were having various vaginal infections and wanted us to sue some urologists that we knew in town. Uh, and we got to looking at the cases and saw all of the women had the same product that had been implanted by our friends, the urologists in Athens. And so we went and sat down with the doctors and decided maybe it was a product situation as opposed to a medical malpractice situation. So we started investigating this particular transvaginal sling or incontinence in women. Uh, we went to Europe, we investigated the product, we talked to people over there who had invented the product, determined that the product uh, should not have even been brought into this country. <clears throat> and so we ended up representing about 104 women down in Columbus in federal court uh, in an MDL proceeding that we started down there with Judge Clay Land. Uh, we settled those cases we thought we were kind of out of the MDL multi-district litigation business. Uh, and we got a call from some lawyers up in West Virginia that we knew uh, who wanted us to come up there and look at a, another mesh product uh, that was used to prolapse with women. We looked at that, decided to get in that litigation, uh, and we ended up heading up the largest MDL proceeding in history, still is, Opioids may overtake it, but we'll see. But we did the transvaginal mesh MDL litigation up in West Virginia. Uh, started that out of Athens, Georgia. Uh, we represented 4,000 women when it was over with. Uh, you probably got tired of seeing transvaginal mesh ads on TV. Uh, but uh, we ultimately concluded that litigation over seven years uh, collected $650 million for our clients and helped negotiate uh, $2.5 billion uh, in settlements in that litigation. Uh, Henry Garrard, one of my law partners, is a very masterful uh, mediator and negotiator. Uh, he settles cases all over the country for federal judges in the MDL proceedings. Uh, and so that's what we do. It's a large part of our practice. Uh, the opioid litigation is going to be probably just as big as a transvaginal mesh litigation. Uh, we're suing some of the same companies that we sued in the transvaginal mesh litigation, uh, Johnson & Johnson in particular. Uh, we know all of the players. We know their defense counsel, we know their claims people, uh, and we know the leadership that's involved in heading up the opioid litigation. We were called back when we were doing our transvaginal mesh negotiations with J&J &J by some of the opioid litigation leadership wanting us to become involved. And we couldn't at that time because we were negotiating cases for our female clients, we did not want to impede uh, those negotiations, but once we did settle our transvaginal mesh cases, uh, 
is when we decided to come on board in the opioid litigation. I'm sure that you have read about your prescription, opioid prescription rates down here in Lowndes County. Uh, from 2006 to 2016, Lowndes has been in the first top two categories of opioid prescriptions uh, per 100 residents. It peaked in 2012 at 120 prescriptions written in this county per 100 residents, so more than one prescription per person. Uh, back in 2012, it's dropped off to about 93 prescriptions per 100 citizens now uh, as of 2016. Uh, but I believe if you talk to your law enforcement, uh, sheriff's department down here, your EMS, EMS, EMT folks, you'll find out that other drugs have replaced the opioids because doctors have finally gotten the message that are not right as many prescriptions for opioids uh, as we used to see. I believe you'll, you'll probably see as we do in Athens that heroin has become a big problem in replacing opioids. Uh, other street drugs uh, that are keeping the addictions going, so just because prescriptions are being decreased uh, does not mean that the problem is going to go away. The litigation seeks to recover your past expenses. It may have been increased by the opioid epidemic, law enforcement, drug courts, EMS, EMT, Narcan, that you have to buy to uh, try to save folks' lives who have overdosed, uh, foster care, those type things that the county has already expended, increased jail costs, uh, law enforcement costs. But I think more important, uh, Lowndes County and all the other counties in Georgia are the future cost that hopefully the litigation will bring. Uh, reimbursement of those kinds of costs, the treatment programs, uh, counseling programs, education. Uh, we've attended a couple of the hearings with the federal judge up in Ohio where this litigation is pending. And he has indicated that he wants the money to go to the local level when these cases do so go to the level where the fight's being fought. Uh, and so we anticipate that treatment, counseling, education are going to be three of the big items that this judge will want to see take place when these cases do settle. Uh, these cases will settle. Uh, this industry cannot take the PR that they're continuing to get made the PR. It's like big tobacco. These cases will settle at some point. They'll settle for billions of dollars. We just want to be sure that the money does come to the counties that we represent uh, so that the fight can be fought on the local level uh, as opposed to, you may recall, in the tobacco litigation, all the monies went to the state. Very little of it filtered down to the county level. Um, some of it went to build the Georgia Dome that we don't even have anymore. So we're hoping that this judge, and I think he's going to be true to his word, he's going to see that when the monies do come, that they come to the local level, the city and county level. Uh, and I think that's when Lowndes County needs to have a seat at the table. Uh, and I think you get your best seat at the table through us. Uh, this is national litigation. Uh, you need national counsel representing you. Uh, I know you've had other presentations and other good lawyers that are coming forward and, and trying to get your business. But we believe that we bring a national presence to the table I think if you ask any law firm in Georgia, if they're honest with you, they'll tell you that our law firm, Blasting Game Birch, is the best multi-district litigation firm in the state, uh, and we would love to have your business. Uh, we've got more lawsuits filed now than any other law firm in the state. We've got about 40 lawsuits that we've already filed on behalf of counties. Uh, just to give you some idea of who we represent, uh, we represent, of course, athens Clark County, uh, Oconee County, Crisp County, Jeff Davis, Sumter, Oglethorpe, Madison, Cook, Hall, which is Gainesville, Irwin, Walton, Banks, Decatur, which is Bainbridge, City of Bainbridge, Twiggs, Bullock, City of Statesboro, uh, <coughs> Elbert County, Macon, Bibb County, uh, Milledgeville, Tifton, Habersham, Lincoln, McDuffie, Jones, Warren, Butch, Doherty, which of course is Albany, uh, 
Ben Hill, Jasper, and Worth. Uh, that's just a list of some of the counties that we represent. We'd love to have you all join us and, and let us represent you. We do believe that, that uh, in knowing all of the players, having the reputation that we have, uh, that we can do the best job for you. We handle it on a 30% contingency fee basis, plus we advance all the expenses. Uh, we get our expenses back in the 30% if we recover for you. If we do not recover anything, uh, we do not uh, get our expenses reimbursed. We just eat our expenses, so the county never expends any money uh, in our representation. We would also uh, bring in a county attorney, bring in Walter, on our fee contract so that the county does not have to pay Walter for anything that he does in assisting in the litigation. At some point through expert witnesses, we're going to need certain statistics, statistical data from the county, from the various departments as to how we think the opioid epidemic has affected this county, uh, and we'll be able to send people in to assist in doing that, but it will take some work on behalf of certain county personnel in generating those numbers for us, uh, and I think your county attorney uh, can certainly help us in that respect, and uh, that's why we, we like to ask the county attorney to participate uh, with us in the fee contract uh, in doing so. Uh, so we would like to have your business. Uh, we think our law firm can do the best job for you. Uh, you'll have three members of the American College of Trial Lawyers working for you on this particular project, and that's an organization, national organization, where 1% of the trial lawyers in the state become eligible for the top 1%, and you'll have three of those working for you. Um, Walter's father, Mr. Gus Elliott, is a member, and my good friend Greg Talley down here just got in. So those are the kind of lawyers you'll have working for you uh, if we represent you. So. Thank you for having us down. Chris and I welcome the opportunity to be here. Uh, I'm certainly available. We're available to answer any questions you may have this morning. Uh, but again, thanks, thanks for letting us come. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Hill? No, thank you, Mr. Hill. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you all.